Um, so the first question on the test, I think it's considering the test is what you had trouble with, and I think what's what's I, an intelligent way of handling this is go through the questions, look and see where the answers were, if there were any answers here in the study guide, and then look back at think about the videos and see where where you could have gotten that information to answer that question, and then ask the question, what could how what could I have done? to successfully have prepared for that question. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so here we have a question that reads, uh, the graph above shows data collected from reactions at different temperatures of a substrate at pH 6. Based on the data, what results predicted that, uh, can be predicted at a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius? Now, where is this coming from? That's coming from our discussion on enzymes, where we said when we have this, uh, we drew, you can go back and look at the uh, one of the videos that we did in class, right? Mm -hmm. So it's content that we did in class we took notes on. That when you have a chemical reaction, if you have A plus B, and you're going to yield C, right? That's a chemical reaction. You're combining these two, and you're making a product. And we said this is the product. And we said, I'm going fast because we already went over and you can go look at the details later. Mm -hmm. And these are the reactants, right? And we said that these two things are combined and form something else. And we said that there was, when you do that, so often you need some energy. And that this is the energy that A and B start off as, but C ends up being at a lower energy, which is why the reaction happens to begin with and that you need to be you need some amount of energy to, to start the reaction and we call that the activation energy and we said that the 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 enzyme what enzyme does is that we said it, it lowers that activation energy so the C still ends up where it is but it takes less energy to get there so it happens faster and we said that the enzyme's not used up in the reaction. So we learned a few things when we went over this, that a chemical reaction can come, and this is just one form of a chemical reaction, but in, uh, chemical reactions generally need some kind of activation energy, and that an enzyme lowers that activation energy. And we actually drew a small example of an enzyme, and we said, if we have this thing, this protein, that has a specific shape, that often you can get A and, and B fitting in here, and A and B are two different shapes, and they fit in to these slots. And what the enzyme does is it brings them together and they react, and they might form covalent bonds with one another, but they make this thing C. The enzyme itself never really bonds bonds with the with the rea uh, with the reactants, right? With the, what we call another word for reactants, we said substrate, right? Substrate reactants, right? Reagents. So those were all words that we had used back then. Oh, excuse me. So you can go ahead and look at that later, okay, for reference. But you agree that we covered that material, right? But you know what? After all that said and done, you didn't need to do any of that. All this was, and yes, we did cover that information, but really this, this question is not asking you any of that. It's asking you, based on the data, well, there's the data, what re results can be predicted at 5 degrees Celsius? All it's asking you to do is read the graph. Right. So here it is at 20, and here it is at what looks to be about 10. Mm -hmm. So 5 would be about here. Where would it be? It would be somewhere around here, right? This yeah. would be at what? It would be at 0. Mm -hmm. So the, the answer here would be what? E. E. It would be E. Now let's look and see what answer you chose. Let me pause it while I get up the zip grade. All right, so let's look at this one. It says, which, which statement is true is uh, about enzymes is not true, right? Mm -hmm. And when we look at that, 
And we say enzymes are composed of polypeptide chains. Well, that's true. Most enzymes, actually, but mm-hmm. are made of proteins. So that's a polypeptide chain. Did you know that? Yes. So you know, and please remember, this is not about whether it's you understand it or not. Like you don't have to. You don't have to say yes to make me feel better. It's about if you don't understand, I can explain to you. But if you do understand, then we can move on. That's the only reason I'm asking the questions. So you have uh, polypeptide chain. It's a protein. So yes, that's true. Enzymes. Uh, form a temporary bond with the reactant. That's true. That's this. Uh, that's what we talked about, right? So, enzymes are destroyed when they're used. See, this is not true. Enzymes keep yeah, being I reused. See, I remember that one. All right. So then, you said C. So that one was correct. And the enzyme specific site, and we know that that's true as well. Right. So the only one that's untrue is C. I think I made it a point to say that. Mm-hmm. When we to make sure people understood that that's a big quality of enzymes. They're not used up in the reaction. Yeah. Enzymes are able to heat up molecules so that they can react. Enzymes don't create heat. Mm-hmm. So that is not true, right? Right. Pro- enzymes provide CO2 for chemical reactions. They don't provide any par- any molecule. All they do, in, I think the analogy I used in class is they're matchmakers. They bring the two reactants together. They bring A and B together to allow them to make C, but they themselves don't get involved with it, okay? So they act very much like a matchmaker. So this is not true either. So our biological catalyst, that's actually the definition. Actually, I use that word. If you go back and look at the notes in the video, I use the word catalyst. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know. And I said, enzymes are catalysts. They're biological catalysts. That's what they are. And absorb excess heat. Again, they don't absorb or re- or produce heat. They do re- they do lessen the requirement for the energy. Mm-hmm. So that's where people might have gotten confused. So those three, if if you got either one of these wrong, and we'll have to find your answers. I can't find them right now. But if you got either one of these wrong. It certainly wasn't because it wasn't covered, and it doesn't seem like you don't understand. So if you got these wrong, and again, I, I hope I can find your answers, it would be telling us that maybe you have a lot of test anxiety because now that you're calm and looking back at it, it makes sense, but then when you're taking the test, it didn't make sense. So we have to think about why that would be, you know. Mm-hmm. why What is it that, that's making you choose the wrong answer during the test, but then before the test, you're okay. Let's take a look at the, the next uh, answer here. Now, we did do anatomy camp, but and, yeah, the lights go off. That's yeah, unfortunate. Was telling us about that. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. Uh, that's why I have this little light and the other little light. So when we're looking at this and, we're, and you think, oh, my God, I don't know anything about the esophagus or the stomach or the colon or the intestines. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't need the, I don't know anything about pepsin or trypsin. So you might be freaking out when you see a question like this, thinking, oh, my God, I, I don't remember any of this. Well, you, you're right not to remember any of that because we didn't cover any of that, right? You might have seen you, – you did cover this if you went to anatomy camp. Mm-hmm. But – and we did talk about enzymes, right. and we did talk about pH. Mm-hmm. I went twice. So, okay. oh, so you went both times, and so you probably did see the intestines. Mm-hmm. But this is not about the intestines. This question is not about – even about pH. Could you turn the light on for me? Yeah. Thanks. This is yes. about. What's up? You need me for something? I'll, I'll just text you. Okay. okay. Sounds good. So it says relative rate of enzymatic ac- of enzyme action. So what's an, so the how fast how well is the enzyme working? That's all you really have to know, right? Mm-hmm. So which one's working better? Let me ask you that without even having to. Is it that one? This one, right? Because it's yeah. higher, right? It has a higher one. That's pipes. That's pepsin or pepsin. It doesn't really matter how you pronounce it, right? That's the P one, right? It's, is that always going to be higher, or is it, or is no, it always? It's just this is just a chart. Oh, okay. So this this is the kind of question where it's just like, can you read this chart? Okay. Here's this data. Can you read it? Right. That's all this is. Just like the other one, right? Mm-hmm. So this one's higher. What at which one? At what are the best pHs for each of those? 
What's he, the best one? Like the highest. You see how whoever did this, whoever used this test, what mm-hmm. they do? What they do? They did something I told them not to do, right? They, they, they drew it. Yeah. No slacking at any time. No slacking. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, I was thank you, Anya. No, no problem. Thank you. Yep. So you draw a line straight down, right? Mm-hmm. Now you might say, "Well, we're not allowed to draw on the paper," but they don't have to draw. Whoever did this didn't have to do that. All they had to do is take this 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 piece of paper and fold it. Not fold it, but you know you can kind of like loop it over, yeah, like that. There you go. And they just put the line down and use that as your straight line to go down, and you'll find a number there. What number do you think that is? You like five, maybe? No, not five. Like four. Yeah, see, so that's seven. Mm-hmm. So that's about halfway. What's about halfway? Is about three point five four, right? Something like mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. Does it, do you think you have to be exact? No, no, because they don't give you the numbers, so they wouldn't want you to be exact. You agree that that's the that's the best, right? That's yeah. the high. That's the best for for Pepsin. What's the best for so the best for Pepsin? You're saying is, is somewhere around three point five or four. You're saying that, right? Yes. What about the other one? Yes. That's like 7.5. Seven, okay, I can, li- I can live with 7.5. Since this is 7, that's 14. There's 7 here, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you yeah, know, 7.5, yeah. Might be 8, but probably 7.5. 7.5 is fine. Okay. All right, so the graph above indicates the enzyme pepsin, that's the P one, mm-hmm. would function best when? And what do we say? That one was four, that 3.5 to 4. 3.5 3. to 4. So which one of these, and where would this work best in then? Certainly around, anywhere around, what, 2 to like 6, right? 2 to 6, it would work pretty good. So the mouth. 2 to 6. Two, Once oh, you get to oh, 6, it's here. it's stomach. Yeah. So 6 is probably about here somewhere, so it's not mm-hmm. the best. So somewhere around here, right? Yes. The stomach would be the best. And but uh, yeah. So the stomach is is where you'd want to see the answer for this. Okay. So this is all about can you read a graph and take that information and apply it to a diagram. That's all it was. This could have been a mountain, it could have been a river, it could have been anything. It just happened to be a, a human anatomy, but it could have been anything. It could have been a pH and the relative reaction. Mm-hmm. So this enzyme works best in the stomach. By the way, it's not part of the question, but where would trypsin been work best at? There was the seven, seven or eight, seven point so five the, eight. Um, what is that? In test. Yeah. So this one, this one, you probably find it here, and this one, you probably find it over here, right? Yes. So see, that's all. This, that's all they're asking you. So I don't know if you got it right or wrong. I wish I again. I wish I had your answers, but the. In the case of enzyme pepsin would would work best in again the stomach B. I hope I didn't throw them away after all that. I kind of know why I saved some and then not others. That, that's, that's the end of the quarter. Things happen. All organic compounds contain what element? Um, isn't it carbon? Yeah, it is carbon. You're right. Do you remember which one's carbon? Which symbol's the carbon? C. That's right. You see, so you were pointing to calcium for a minute there, and the oh. reason the reason you were pointing to calcium is because it says C A, and that's mm-hmm. also the beginning of carbon, which is annoying. So, but you just got to remember C. I mean, you, you should know C because we 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 probably drew it about a billion times in this mm-hmm. in the last few weeks. So. All right, so that's again. So far, I don't seem. It doesn't seem like you're having too much trouble with this content. So I'm, I'm, I'm questioning why you didn't do so well on the test. You know. So which, which, of, which three elements are often found in organic compounds? Now I had you memorize the different. I asked you to memorize the different compounds, right? Mm-hmm. The, car, the elements in every different kind of compound, right? I said, what are the bio, what are the elements found in life? Can you remember what those were? That's the um, carbon. Mm-hmm. What is what's the acronym? What's the word? Chop not schnapps. Schnapps. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. if I if I were taking a test on on, on some scrap paper, I, I would I would write schnapps. 
That's the first thing I do. As soon as I sound, what elements are found in organic compound? Oh, that, that's the first thing I do. And then the other thing is I would, I would try to remember, and I, and I would then probably try to answer the question, right? Mm-hmm. But I'd also try to remember, well, and I'm just going to add this because on the next test you're probably going to see some of the more detailed questions, right? So mm-hmm. I would know that, that fats and slash lipids have what? They have, isn't that carbon and, not, and not hydrogen? hydrogen. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of, a little bit of oxygen, right? Mm-hmm. But mostly carbon and hydrogen, mostly. So you would draw it out what we were talking about in class with the fats and uh, but you, you, I wouldn't draw it out. I just would, because they're asking me. They're not asking me to draw it out. They're just asking me what the elements the are. So mm-hmm. let me, let me, let me just try to remember while I'm sitting here. And really, this is about you and I talking about it, so that you can uh, let's try to investigate, see what you remember, what you don't. Okay. You remember carbohydrates or what? That's carbon. Hydrogen and oxygen? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. and oxygen. That's right, CHO. Right? And what, uh, by the way, for carbohydrates, what's the ratio of carbon to hydrogen and oxygen? Is it one to one two? One to two to one. That's right. One to two to one. Try to remember that because there was a question later on that, isn't there? Yes. And then we take a look at this and we say, we remember that uh, amino acids have what elements? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and what else? Don't they have... That's amino acids? Mm-hmm. So, uh, phosphate? Nope. It's no, the one sorry. they don't have. They have everything but phosphate. Oh, that's... So phosphate. nitrogen and sulfur, right? Yeah, that's... That's yeah, the one so I it's a confuser. So that's a really the confusing one. So nitrogen. Mm-hmm. Remember nitrogen. Remember this structure of amino acids. Okay. And then nucleic acids. Nucleic acids have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, sulfur. and then phosphorus. Okay. So they have schnapps total. Mm-hmm. So these are the organic elements. These are the elements that are organic. But by the way, remember, organic means with carbon. Anything with carbon, right? It's carbon right. chain. So. Right, so let's look at this. Let's see which ones have are often found in organic compounds. Well, we know carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are in all of them, aren't they? Yes. They're in all of these. Have I mean, even fats have a little bit of oxygen in them. Mm-hmm. So carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are found in all of them. Carbon, hydrogen, neon? Well, we never talked about neon, and right. it certainly is not. It's a noble gas and doesn't have anything to do with, with normal function of life. Nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, nitrogen is in, is in some. So I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? When I, if I were testing, I'd be like, eh, maybe. Question mark. Yeah. Nitrogen, chlorine, and phosphorus. No. Now it turns out chlorine is involved in our bloodstream, but it's not really our organic part of our, our organic compounds. So that one's wrong. So it leaves me with the choice between nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, or carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I chose C. I remember that. Okay, well, that was a mistake, but why was it a mistake? Because when you look at this... All the organic ones have carbon. Well, well but you're right. I, I mean, you got to say, I just want to point this out. This was would have been a good answer mm-hmm. if this one wasn't here. Right. Because carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are in all of them. Right. But carbon and uh, carbon, or nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen are only in two of them. Two of the organic compounds. Right. Okay. So if you're going to ask me, oft, most you know are often found, uh, most often, which is the mo- which is the best answer? Because remember, okay. multiple choices, multiple choice questions are always the best answer, not necessarily the only right answer. Mm-hmm. That's really a bad thing about multiple choice questions. So often there's more than one right answer. Mm-hmm. So this is the best answer. This, that's why it make, that's what makes this one wrong. But you were not wrong. This is this is often found in organic compounds, specifically proteins and nucleic acids. All right. Okay. So that sounds like in this one it's a test taking, right? So this right. one you got it wrong because of test taking. Yeah, I remember that one because I was like stuck on that one for a while. So it's test taking skill, mm-hmm. right? Because. 
the first thing you do in a test is, a multiple choice test is get rid of the ones you absolutely know are wrong. So I think you would have probably gotten rid if you would have done that. And I don't know if you did that or not, but if you would have done that, you would have got rid. You would have certainly got gotten rid of. Uh, I got rid of the, those two. At these the two right away, those. right? Mm -hmm. And then and that they, left you with two, with and you were like, okay, what do I do now? You know. Mm -hmm. And so again the best and that's what you got to remember is you're looking for the best answer any multiple choice question you're looking for your best answer so carbon can form how many bonds four four so that one should have been easy and i almost don't want to put it in red because that should have been no one should and of course five six and seven are i also are think red. i have a problem you know when you it's like the letters are the correct straight in a row, or they are, that's how it is straight in a row, like the AAA. I feel like one of those are incorrect because it's just in a row. Yeah, like you that. start what hap that's called, that's the, te that's where test anxiety comes in. That's yeah. test anxiety where you're just like, this can't be right. And that's where you're, you're not confident in your mm -hmm. own thinking. That's how, mm -hmm. And what you got to do is that, that might be, if you're not confident, if you're not sure, if you're making guesses, then maybe it's it is something that you need to look at the pattern and maybe that might help you. That's but that's pull, you're grasping at straws at that point. Mm -hmm. You know this. It sounds like you know you know a solid amount. You might get some of the some of the nuances confused. Like you, from what I gather from our questioning and answering here, you got these two confused, right? Yes. Yeah. You got these where nitrogen goes. You got these two confused, right? Nucleic acids and amino acids. But okay, that's not bad. You knew you knew where most of these things were. You knew one to two to one. That's a lot, right? So you knew a lot. You just needed to study, get it a little bit more into your, a little more solidly in your mind, that separation, that difference between amino acids and nucleic acids. But if we would have had this conversation before the test, you would have aced it for sure. So now... Animals, so yeah, the, try not to worry about the sequence until you're done, you've done your best, and you're like, I don't know about these two, let me look at this. You know, er, then you can start grasping some straws. Okay, so animals store glucose containing fragments in the form of what? Animals store glucose in what form? How do animals store glucose? I, I said, I think I... Mm, cellulose. Cellulose, okay. Structure. I said lipids, I think. All right, so the answer is not cellulose. Cellulose, is, you're right, that, that is a form of storing. Cellulose is for structure, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah, that is and for structure. It's, and it's for plants. That's right? for so plants. that's plants. And glycogen is for yeah, That's right. Glycogen is for animals. Animals, yeah. And that is for storage mm -hmm. of energy. Excuse me. Now, lipids do store energy. You're right. Mm -hmm. But they're not carbohydrates, not glucose. You've changed. Lipids, remember, are long chains of carbon, where glucose is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, one to two to one ratio. So they're fundamentally different. We take the sugar, when we put, eat too much sugar, we store it as glycogen, but then when we eat too much, we turn it into fat. We turn it into lipids. Our bodies do that. And you know from just by your experience in life that fat is different from sugar, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially, that, of course, wax is, we do make wax, ear wax, for instance, and other kinds of waxes. Wax are lipids. Waxes are lipids. And no, they're not for storage of energy. They're really for kind of waterproofing. They're really good at, at, at creating a barrier. But the two that I was testing, because those are the two that we were talking about, were the two that it could have been, would have been either cellulose or glycogen, because we talked about those being poly polymers of, of glucose, over and over and over and over and over again, and I and I kept and I told you repeatedly. I think you'll agree that it was it was clear that I was going to ask a question about this. That which one was you know which ones which ones used in what organism? The better answer. Yeah. Well, this is for sure. We said. Remember in the notes, we said. 
there was polymers of uh, glucose, we said there was a chart, and you can go back and look at the video if you'd like, mm-hmm. but there's a chart, and we talked about uh, glycogen, right? Mm-hmm. And we said that was in animals. And we said amylopectin, which was what? Amylopectin. And that's amylopectin and amylose? No, amylo, not amylopectin. What, uh, uh, amylose was what? Amylose, is, that's the structure in blue. That was a type of starch. Oh, yeah, yeah. And starch was, it. so this is, there were three kinds, of three, but that was starch was the one that I told you you needed to know. And I said that was going to be in plants, right? For mm-hmm. plants, for storage of energy. That's right. Right. And amylopectin was what? Is it also starch? Let me see. Do you have it here? It's right here. Mm-hmm. Amylopectin. Well, what was the one that was, you tell me, which was the one that was in bacteria? The one in bacteria? Let me see if you write it down. Yes, it's right there. So amylopectin was one of those starch ones, right? Amylose and amylopectin. Mm -hmm. And then there was what? What's the one that was in bacteria? There it is in front of you. That's right, peptidoglycan. And that came up later, didn't it? I think, yes, it did. So that's one of those charts I said, you guys need to know where these things come from, where they go, and how they're stored. And, of course, there was cellulose, and cellulose was for structure, remember, in plants. And we organized in, the, in, in this way. We said plants had cellulose, and I see the chart right here in front of you. They say cellulose is a structure, and amylose and amylopectin were for st- uh, are, are types of starch, and that's for energy storage, Right. And we even drew them out, kind of look at what they look like. Glycogen was for storage of energy in the liver of humans, but in animals in general, we store it as, as glycogen. And we know that cellulose is for st- walls, it's for structure. And chitin is used in fungus and in insects, right? Exoskeletons of insects. And we said that, that uh, peptidoglycan was part of... Uh, the cell wall of bacteria, right? So we yes. said those we needed to know, and we need to know where they're used and how they're used. And so there it is. There's the example. Now, we also, uh, you might have remembered where you might have gotten confused and why you might have chosen lipids is that in the study guide, they did talk about lipids storing energy. But the trick, or not really a trick, but the key to this problem is that it says glucose-containing. So it has to have sugar, and fats don't have sugar. They can be sugars can be turned into fats, but they're not. They don't have sugar in them. All right. Long chains of amino acids are found in what? Lipids. Okay. No. Nope. No. Mm. Lipids are long chains of carbon. So I can oh. see why you confuse it. Long. You saw a long chain, and your brain automatically flipped. But remember, we talked about there being a number of polymers. And what, what are polymers? Polymers. 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 Poly, they have many um, they, many molecules. Very good. Many monomers. Monomers. Yeah. Monomers. So really, what they are is a long chain of monomers, right? So a polymer is a long chain of monomers. We talked about that. That's what a polymer is. So long chain of monomers. So if we're talking about a long chain of glucose monomers, glucose being a monomer, Mm -hmm. what we're talking about is things like peptidoglycan, uh, uh, starch, uh, glycogen, uh, uh, cellulose, okay? Those are all polymers of glucose, right? So these blocks, these monomers would be glucose because then we're talking about a carbohydrate. If we're talking about nucleic acids and we had a long chain of nucleic acids, let's say D 
deoxy, deoxyribose mm-hmm. nucleic acids, what would this be if these were a bunch of nucleic acids all connected together and the ribose was, didn't have a sugar? Would there oxygen? be the polymer? There would be a polymer. So what would the polymer be if, these were, if the monomers were nucleic acids? They would be either DNA or RNA, right? Okay. So that, that again, that, that goes back to the idea that you understand that DNA is one of those, and RNA are polymers of nucleic acids, where DNA are, are polymers of deoxyribose, and RNA is a polymer of ribose. Okay, so this would be, again, A, T, G, C, right? And this is this over here would be A, U, G, C. We talked a lot about that, didn't we? Yes. So, uh-huh. so, if, if this polymer was made of A, T, G, C, A, T, repeating for a long time, mm-hmm. that would make this DNA. DNA, right? But if this polymer were, if this polymer were... Doesn't the uh, T get placed with a, replaced with a U? That's right. There would be two chains and they would, they would, they would hydrogen bond and all that, right? We'll see that again very soon, so try to remember that. So that's that's if this this uh, polymer were nucleic acids, right? Mm-hmm. If a polymer were made of glucose, if it was one glucose molecule after another after another after another after another after another, and it was branched different depending on how they're connected. It could be any one of these, right? Starch, glycogen, peptidyl glycan, or cellulose. Right. Because the monomer is glucose, right? Glucose. It would be a carbohydrate polymer, which is any one of those that we just talked about. If the monomer is a nucleic acid, then it's either DNA and RNA, right? If there's a T, you know it's DNA. Now, if this polymer is an amino acid, and those those chains, those those new those amino side and a carboxylic acid side and then there's a side chain the R, the R group, right? If there's a bunch of amino acids connected together, what do we call that? If there's a bunch of amino acids connected together? Yeah. Would, uh, I don't know that one. Well, that would be called the protein. Okay. So that's a protein. Now that was in your study guide and that was also in the notes Okay, so that's just a that's just what well, all that is is just demonstrating a gap, right? Mm-hmm. A need. Again, had we had you gone over the study guide with me before the test, right? I'm just trying to point this out so that you understand that how you might improve because that was one of our big questions, right? How can we improve our the test scores in the future? Is that right? Yes. All right. So if we. Those are the those are the kind of the three big polymers we talked about. Now, lipids. So far, what have we talked about here? We talked about carbohydrate polymers, polymers of nucleic acids, and polymers of proteins. Mm-hmm. We had, did not this or polymers of amino acids. Excuse me. We did not talk about polymers of, of lipids because lipids are not polymers. Lipids are long chain, and this is where you get confused because the they say long chain, and you knew that long chain of carbons and hydrogen, right? Yes. And that's going to be a lipid. There's going to be some oxygen in there. There'll be sometimes there's a phosphate like in phospholipids, et cetera. But in general, there's long chain of, of, of carbon and hydrogen. But that is not a polymer. There's no, that, that is not a polymer. It's just a long chain of carbons all connected together. These all have specific monomers, long chains of carbon that we don't consider them monomers. All right, so going off, let's take a look at this question again. Now that we went all, we reviewed all that. It says long chains of amino acids are found in amino acids. They are proteins. Proteins. That's right. 
That's right. You got it. And you see that's, that's all there is to it. So you really do have to know these kind of, these are polymers. This is not a polymer. What pol monomer goes with which polymer? You have to be able to identify. I, I see a bunch of nucleic acids. I know that's DNA or RNA. Mm -hmm. I see a bunch of amino acids. I know that's a protein. This is a kind of a base. I didn't, I didn't draw out amino acid. I just wanted you to see, be able to identify protein as the answer. And the rest of these, of course, are, are not correct for all the reasons we talked about. All right, let's go on to the next one, and we'll do the, this third one. That'll be half the time to have some time in a future tutoring session. What do you think? Yeah. Since it's 4.13, I don't want to keep us too long. Okay. You want to do it on Monday? Whenever you'd like. The, the more, uh, any month, uh, today's Wednesday. We can do it Friday if you'd like as well. Uh, HPAC meeting. Okay, we can do it Monday. Or during advisory, remember. This is better because it's less people, but... Distractions. All right, less distractions, but whatever. Refer to the illustrations above. Molecules like molecule B, so that's this one. Mm -hmm. It's a long chain of what? Carbon um, and hydrogen. Yeah. Carbon. There's some oxygen, but it's mostly carbon and hydrogen. What would you call that? If it's a long chain of carbon and uh, hydrogens or mm -hmm. carbons. Carbons and hydrogens, what do you call it? Would that be proteins again? Nope. No, that's lipids. Lipids, lipids. lipids. Are... All right, excellent. Excellent. So you do remember it. So you just see how you get it straight, right? Mm -hmm. And you knew that. You fixed it yourself. So that's right. B is a lipid. So the answer would be B. Of course, if you don't, if you don't see, there was three, two or three questions all based on whether you knew that a long chain it's carbon and hydrogen was a lipid. And this, this of course, is what? That's the carbon, so that's when they, when they connected. I cannot remember. So yeah, so let's look at it. You got an oxygen. Mm -hmm. It's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in, in a chain. So it's carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon hydrates. Car carbohydrate. That's excellent. See, you do know. Just have to calm down and think it through. See, there's that test anxiety again. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, which is it? Which is it? Which is it? I'm yeah. confused. See, don't do that to yourself. Okay. You know it. It's in your brain. Just have to bring it out. Also practice. So that's a carbohydrate. Could be glucose. Could be it's not fructose because fructose is five sided, even though it's six carbons. Could be galactose. You don't know, you're not sure. I didn't ask you to memorize it, but it's certainly six carbon sugar, right? By the way, since it's six since it's carbon six, what's the rest of it? Um ten, five. What's the what's the ratio? You told me earlier. Oh, one to two. One. All right, so one is six. What mm -hmm. is a two? Twelve. And then six. There you go. See, again, you now knew I that. Get it. You knew <laughs> that. I thought that was just numbers that they would just had set out no. like that, but no, no, no. I don't. <laughs> okay. One to two to one. All right, which of the following is not an organic molecule? Ice. Nice. That's an easy one. Hopefully you got that one right. You know, I believe so. <laughs> you know carbohydrates are, you know lipids are, you know like that. We just went over the four, the four main kinds, right? Which of the following organic molecules is the most closely related to nucleic acids? This one's easy because the... Or, the organic molecules? Is most related. closely related to, to nucleic acids. Um, amino acids. No, nucleotides. Nucleotides, very good. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so <laughs> if you look here, nucle, nucle, right, and look here, there's nucle. So the two, even if, like, let's say you blank out, you're like, oh, my God, well, how am I going to figure this out? The answer's in the words. Right. So nucleic, nucleic. So now amino acids are found in proteins, mm, right. right? They're the monomers of, pro of, of yeah, proteins or polypeptides. Carbon-hydrogen chains are what? Carbon-hydrogen chains, that, that's lipids. Lipids. And uh, a polymer of sugars is, well, we already talked about it, but let's go ahead and list them again just to remind ourselves. It's cellulose, uh, glycogen, uh, what else? Peptidoglycan. Starch, 
right? All these are polymers of sugars. So nucleic acids, obviously nucleotides, are the monomers of, nucleic, uh, of DNA and RNA. So, yes, it is, in fact, C is the answer. Nucleic acids include what? RNA and DNA and RNA. That's right, DNA and RNA. Not glucose, and that's a whole other category. Lipids and sugars are another category. Chlorophyll and retinol, that's just, that doesn't make any sense. Chlorophyll is a, is a pigment molecule, and retinol uh, has, is not a molecule. Hey, because the lights go off. Yes, please. Yes, please. We're recording a tutoring session, so you can come in, but, you know, keep it down. Hey, hey. The shape of a protein is determined by... That's right. You got it. Excellent. And that's called the primary structure, and we talked about that. I was about to say none of you were, but I have to think about it. Yep, it's, that's perfectly fine. And, of course, that led to the secondary structure and the tertiary structure and, finally, the quaternary structure. So there are structures to proteins, and we've talked a little bit about that, but the key is that the order of the amino acids and the side chains determine how they fold, and that folding determines the shape. So very good. Its size, its location in the cell, and none of the above are all wrong. Although you could argue those points, the best answer is the type and order of the amino acids. Which of the following is a carbohydrate? DNA. DNA is what? You just said it a minute ago. What is DNA? It's a connection with... What is DNA? DNA nucleotide. It's a nucleic acid. Right. Okay. Right. What are, let's go back and just review it one more time. Okay. Let's go over. What are the four kinds of, of biomolecules? What are they? We have carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. um, you already said it. You were hydrogens. right. Right. You were, you were going to say nucleic acids. No. Right. At least I heard. That's what I heard to come out of your mouth was nucle nuclear. So I, so I assumed. Nucleic acids, carbohydrates. What are the other two? Hydrogens? No, the types. So this is carbohydrates, mm -hmm. which you're right. It would be carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. Like one to two to one, right? Nucleic acids, which are making nucleotides. That's right. But those are, two, those are two. There's four. What's three and four? When you say I'm going to be so sad, I don't remember it. You do know it. You know it. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> because you know it. Lipids? Lipids, that's right. And this is how you practice. Mm -hmm. You say, what are the four bi biomolecules? And you, you sit there and you try to rack your brain until you can write it out without looking anything up. And you can do it out. And that's why flashcards work well. But and honestly, writing it over and over and mm -hmm. writing it yourself, looking at a blank sheet of paper and then writing it out, mm -hmm. that's really the, the top. If you can do that, you're ready to go. So mm -hmm. lipids, nucleic acid, carbohydrates, you're missing one. What is it? It's carbohydrates, nucleic acids, nucleotides. It's part of nucleic acids. Proteins. Proteins, that's right. So you did know it, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's about getting it right quickly because what the problem with testing is that it's fast. You run out of time. Mm -hmm. If you had all the time in the world, you might be able to figure it out, but... If you only have 57 minutes, 90 minutes, then, you have, then you're limited in what you can do. Which of the following is a carbohydrate, then? A polysaccharide is many sugars, right? That's what a polysaccharide is? It, it, no, it is, we're still here on number, on number 21. Oh. You said it was DNA. That's not right. That's yeah. it. What is DNA? DNA is those four. Which one? Which one oh. of the four is DNA? Deoxyribose nucleic acid is which one of these? Nucleic acid is which one of these? Deoxyribose DNA? nucleic acid. Which one DNA is? Which one is DNA? Proteins? Carbohydrates. Hold on. Hold on. You're just freaking out now. Now you're just kind of like, this is, this is test anxiety again. You're being put on the spot, right? 
Okay. And instead of thinking it through, thinking about the words that are being used, taking a deep breath and kind of walking through it, what you're doing is this. You're saying, oh, it's one of these, right? And that's everybody does that. So just calm down and think about the words. Which the DNA, listen to what I'm saying, deoxyribose nucleic acid is which one of these four? Nucleic acids. Nucleic acids. The answer is in the name. And you knew that if you, you knew what DNA stood for, if you would have said it out loud and then looked at these four things, which you told me what they were, I didn't tell thee what they were. I, I thought you said this, but maybe I'm wrong. These four things you said, so these came out of your brain, and DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, that's here, right? You know that's a nucleic acid, so there's, it, it's not one of these three because you know it's this one, right? It's in the, it's in the name. So that's not a carbohydrate by definition, right? If it's a if it's nucleic acids, if it's not a it's not a carbohydrate. All right. We said wax. I said earlier, and you can review it when you look at the video. Wax is a lipid. Right. That's a fat. So that's not a carbohydrate. We talked about that a little bit ago as well. Insulin. Insulin. You might not know. You might you might not know, but I I, I did kind of mention it, but you may not know. It's all right. It's a protein. It's a protein, but but you may not know. One you definitely should know is sucrose. That's one of those things you needed to know. It was a, called the disaccharide. I would have said it's a sugar. Nice. And it's also a sugar, so that makes it a sugar. So a sugar, it's a carbohydrate. Right? A sugar is a carbohydrate. So the answer is D. Right? Remember we talked about sucrose, uh, ribose, mm -hmm. uh, fructose. fructose, glucose, That's how it's galactose. Pronounced? Fructose? Yeah, fructose. Is it in fruit? Or? That's right. But fructose is not a, is not a disaccharide. Sucrose is a disaccharide. Sucrose is table sugar. And so those are carbohydrates. Again, I remember hearing that. Yeah. Table sugar. Mm -hmm. So polysaccharides are polysaccharides are what? Polysaccharides are many sugars. Yeah, exactly. So which one of those four is it? Not lipids. All right, good. Fat. No, that's good. That's test taking skill. Not lipids. Okay, go ahead. Not unsaturated fat. That's right, it's not a fat, it's not unsaturated or saturated. Carb not carbohydrates. Wait, 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 hold on. Carbohydrates. Proteins. Proteins. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you, when you go back and listen to this, and mm -hmm. I want you to, I want you to listen to it, you should let your mom listen to this too, so she can get a, help you, she, get a better grasp of how she can help you, okay? So now let's take a look at this. You have this is disaccharide sugar. Is it what? What's the sucrose? What's the sugar? What is it? Hey. Disaccharide sugar. What is it? Disaccharide from sugar. Yeah, sugar is a what? It's a carbohydrate. We just said that. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about polysaccharides. Mm -hmm. And you're saying it's you're oh, saying it's a protein. It's a carbohydrate. You see the you see my problem with this? Mm -hmm. Are you making these connections? What's mm -hmm. going on? It sounds like this word saccharide is throwing you off. Or maybe you just have, really don't understand what a carbohydrate is. Does that make sense? So that goes back to that study guide. Go back and look at that carbohydrate section. Look at, in that study packet, that study guide, there's one, at least one page for each of these biomolecules. It, it's drawn for you. They ask you questions about it. Go back and ask yourself, do I know what a carbohydrate is? So polysaccharide, what are polysaccharides? Uh, you're going to uh, go back to what I said before. A polysaccharide is more than one sugar. It's a polymer of sugars. What are those? Cellulose, starch, glycogen, peptidic glycan. Over and over and over again, right? So that's like five questions all based on this stuff. All right. Hey, how's it going? Okay. So... That's where you need to go. You need to go and kind of break it down for yourself and say, okay, i got to learn what are these different biomolecules. What's saccharides, carbohydrates, either polysaccharides or monosaccharides or disaccharides, and the four different kinds, at least four. It's actually five because of chitin. 
the five different kinds of polysaccharides that I got to know where they are. The chitin is in the in the cell wall of, of a of a fungus, as well as the exoskeleton of arthropods, you know that kind of stuff. I got to I got to learn it. And you have the cards. You, you need to quiz yourself. You need to ask yourself. You need to come in and get help. And I can sit here and tutor and, and and quiz you. Find a friend and get and quiz each other during uh, during. Uh, Advisory. Advisory, whatever works for you, okay? okay. But you got to get these straight. You can't keep confusing them. So polysaccharide is a carbohydrate. So at least we're identifying where you were going wrong on the test, right? Are you feeling more comfortable that you understand what you didn't understand? Yes. Amino acids are monomers of what? Proteins. That's right. I'm not well. Yes. That's right. You know, acids are the monomers of that polymer known as proteins. Very good. Not a disaccharide, not a steroid, and not mm -hmm. nucleotides. That's right. That's right. But it's also knowing this. It's knowing that that that's on the previous page. But it's knowing what those polymers were. Remember I drew out the polymers and I said mm -hmm. if they're a bunch of amino acids put together, they're proteins. If they're a bunch of nucleotides put together, they're either DNA or RNA. If they're a bunch of uh, sugars put together, they're polysaccharides. Right. And lipids are not polymers. Right? So lipids are what? C. Protein molecules. So you're telling me that these are the four classes of biomolecules and you're telling me lipids are proteins. Does that make sense to you? I was looking at a protein chain. No, that's carbon. That's what I mixed it up with. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, non-polar molecules. So, lipids are? Lipids are polar molecules. No, they're not. I meant to say non-polar. Non-polar molecules. That's the same. Because remember the whole membrane thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's polar right. That's very yeah. good. That's very good. So, you just took a minute. It's not a race. Yes, you're under a lot of pressure for time on a test. But it, it's not going to do you any good if you finish a test and they're all wrong. That's my wife. She doesn't know how to do it. So, you're feeling more comfortable. Let's see what's what's on. Let's just take a quick look at what's on the fourth and fifth page. And the fourth page looks like more of this amino acids and enzyme stuff and lipids. And there's glucose again. Pages. That's page four, five, and six. We'll cover it the next session next Monday. I'll post this. All right, so that you can you and your mom can go over it, and maybe you guys can come up with ways that if I can do anything to help you in class or you know. Uh, do anything that might help you. I think you'll see that the study guide is directly related to that test, right? Yeah. That if you would have went over those biomolecules and made sure you knew what those biomolecules were, at least the first three pages, you would have got a solid 100%. Mm -hmm. The next three pages, we'll see tomorrow, all right, next Monday. Okay. All right? Have a good one. Thanks. And then the fifth page is more carbohydrates and proteins and nucleic acids. And so the last in that, a bit nitrogenous bases, and the and the sixth page is more nitrogen and DNA and et cetera, right? Mm -hmm.